Good morning, how are you? I hope your hearts are prepared to worship. If they're not, you pause this video right now and you go on YouTube and you find a few, a few songs that you just want to sing with, sing along with, just listen to. Let your heart be in the right mood and prepare to worship and then come back and watch this video. But right now, I'm going to just take a moment to pray and, uh, and to, to lift you up right now. Father, I thank you for these folks that are tuning in, for the ones that, that just are going to pause the video and go ahead and, and just prepare their hearts. I pray that, that you'll give them a time of worship, whether it's just a one song or whether it's ten songs, that, that the word that I'm bringing to them will, will uplift them in their soul, that it will challenge them, that it will lead them closer to you. Father, we love you and we thank you and we ask all that in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. Now, uh, Matthew. We're going to be in Matthew chapter 8. Matthew chapter 8. And we are looking at um, the cost of discipleship. And there is a cost to discipleship. And Jesus, Jesus gave that to some folks. And we're gonna, I'm just going to quit talking and start reading. It says, And when Jesus saw the great multitudes about him, he gave a command to depart to the other side. And a certain scribe came to him and said, Teacher, I will follow you wherever you go. And Jesus said to him, Foxes have holes and birds of the air have nests, but the Son of Man has nowhere to lay his head. Then another of the disciples said to him, Lord, let me first go bury my father. But Jesus said to him, Follow me and let the dead bury their dead. So Jesus had a large following around him. That's the first thing I want you to notice. Jesus had, Jesus isn't just saying this to, to one guy. He's, he's saying this, there are throngs of people all around him. He comes out and he says to a scribe. Now, what is a scribe? A scribe was kind of a, an expert in the law back in those days. He was somebody in the religious class. He was, he was a higher up in society, higher up in religion. He was kind of one of the Jewish elites um, when it came to Jewish law and that kind of stuff. So this guy comes up to Jesus and says, I'll follow you wherever you go. You know, He's heard Jesus teaching, he's heard his, his preaching, and he's probably seen miracles or at least has heard about some miracles that took place. And he says, Jesus, I'm going to follow you wherever you go. And Jesus is telling this guy who had a little bit of status, all right, he, he had a good bit of status. He says, Hey, look, man, you might be homeless if you follow me. You might be in the middle of the wilderness with nowhere to lay your head if you stick around with me. There, there's no safety. There's no provision necessarily. If you, if you leave the life you have right now, the world for you is going to be flipped upside down. And you're going to see things totally different. You know, but there is a cost, and that cost is life as usual. So that's the cost of discipleship for the scribe, and, and he, we don't know if he goes. We tend to believe that he doesn't go because our own nature says, ah, I wouldn't do that. That's, that's just crazy. I couldn't follow him, be homeless for a year, for three years, for 10 years, for the rest of my life. That's just too much to ask. But that's the cost of being a disciple. Now, what is a disciple? A disciple is someone who follows the teachings of someone else. So here's a guy that's saying, Jesus, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be your disciple. I'm going to follow you everywhere. And Jesus says, no, you have to give this up if you're really going to follow me. If you're going to get all of my teaching, you have to leave everything behind you. And nothing else can come before me. Nothing else can come before that is, is kind of what he's, he's presenting to this guy. All right, so now this guy, we don't know what he does, but later on in, in the Gospels, you see that there is a guy by the name of a rich young ruler. We don't actually know his name, but we call him the rich young ruler who says to Jesus, hey, I want to follow you. You know, I want to be your disciple. And Jesus says to him, have you kept the law? Yeah, I kept the law. And he says, well, go and do this. Sell everything you possess, give it to the poor, and then come follow me. And the guy couldn't do it, and he went away sad because he had so much stuff, because he was wealthy. 
And he couldn't put that stuff behind him to, to follow Jesus. Now, we look right here back in Matthew, and uh, this guy said, I will follow you wherever you go. Now, Jesus knew where he was going. Jesus was going to, at this point, it's fairly early in his ministry, and he was, he was going to go around the, the Sea of Galilee, and he was going to go to Jerusalem, and uh, he was also going to go to the cross. And he knew the preaching that he has probably already preached at this point and that he would preach. And that, that preaching was anyone who wants to keep their life will lose it, and everyone who tries to save their life I just said that wrong. Everyone who will lose their life will find it for my sake, and everyone who tries to keep their life will lose it. And he goes on, and he preaches that, that hard message. And in verse 21, he says, Another of his disciples, these are people who have already been kind of moving around with them throughout the area. They were following Jesus as long as it was convenient. They were following Jesus because they could go home at night. They could go home for lunch and eat. If there were some things that they had to do, they could still go and get it done. But they weren't sold out to Jesus following him all over the region. They were following him while it was kind of convenient. He said, Lord, let me first go and bury my dad. Let me go bury my father. Jesus says, follow me and let the dead bury their own dead. I just want you to think about that. I mean, those are some, those are some tough words. Now, you can look at what some guys say, and they say, yeah, well, this guy's father was probably still alive, and he was meaning, you know, he's waiting on his dad to die, and it may take a year or two. His dad could have died or, or maybe on death's door, and he may die tomorrow even, but funerals back in those days lasted a few days. And Jesus, Jesus was just saying, hey, look, you can't have anything above me. You know, your mom, your dad, your relationships, nothing is going to stand between us. And this is almost one of these exclusive claims of Christ's deity because the Ten Commandments says you honor your mother and your father. And now, now Jesus is telling this guy, you put no one else before me, right? No one else. The, the Shema from, from the Old Testament said, Love the Lord your God with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength. And that's, that's what Jesus is asking for. He's saying, you're going to put me above everything else. All your relationships here, they're nothing in comparison. It's all, it's all dead. And we know that Jesus was talking to folks saying, You're dead in your sin, you're dead in your trespasses and your transgressions. And he's saying, let the, let the dead go and bury their own dead. You come and follow me. Now, there are some things in our lives that, that get in the way between us and, and God. And during this time of, of coronavirus and all that kind of stuff, we're kind of called out. And we can look at our, our priorities, especially as Christians. You know, if you're, if you're not a Christian, then... You know, if, if you don't believe that Jesus became your sin and took God's wrath against you on the cross, if you don't believe that he was dead, like literally dead, buried, and walked out of the grave three days later, it sounds crazy, I know. But if you don't believe that, then, then you're not necessarily a Christian. And this, this message doesn't really, I mean, it could pertain to you, but it's not necessarily being thrown out here for you. But if you identify yourself as a Christian, are you following him? Are you following him? Are you bearing the fruits that, that go along with, with a life that is in Christ? He says, if you're in me and I'm in you, you're going to bear much fruit. I'm the vine, you are the branches, is what he said. And you will bear much fruit. In this time that we're living in, we can actually get away from all the distractions that are out there. We can we can look within ourselves and we can say, you know what? Do I want to follow Christ wherever he leads? Because it may not always be pretty, and I'll, I'll put him above all the other things in this world. Does that mean you're always going to be perfect? 
Absolutely not. But there are so many things that we allow to get in the way between us and the Father that it really looks ridiculous as far as claiming to be Christians. And if, if we called ourselves Christians and if, if those folks back in those days that were followers of Christ, disciples of Christ, during his lifetime and followed the other apostles after his resurrection, if they could come and look at us today and be like, y'all, y'all are, uh, y'all are kind of far-fetched as far as the preachings of Christ and what, what he told us to do. Now, I'm not preaching law to you. All I'm saying is he needs to be first in, in your heart. He needs to be first in your mind. He needs to be first in your life. It's not always going to look like that, but there should be that longing, that desire for that. And when we don't have that, there's kind of this, this sense of sadness that we have because we feel distant and separated from him. So from that point on, Jesus walked away, and there's, you can read about this in, in other Gospels and stuff, and it's a little more in vivid than in Matthew, a little more in detail than in Matthew. But I just want to share that with you. Are you following Christ? And this just kind of popped up as, as the next sermon in the sequence from, uh, from Matthew. So you go out there and just, just use this time in life and in society when, when we're on pause because of this whole COVID-19 thing and say, have I been following him? And turn, repent from that and just say, you know, I haven't. So go out there, and love others as yourself. Go out there and love the Lord your God with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength. Figure out what that looks like in your life. I love y'all, praying for y'all. Take it easy. Have a good day.